If you have coworkers, chances are that you have some that you like and some that you could live without. When you work in a challenging or competitive workplace, tensions can run high. The people we work with can be our closest friends, but they can also be our worst enemies. And when one coworker goes missing from work, it's everyone's problem. My name is Brianne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the 1975 disappearance and reappearance of an Arizona man named Travis Walton. At the time of his disappearance, Travis Walton was carrying out daily tasks in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest. He was a lumberjack. On November 5, 1975, he was working alongside fellow members from his logging crew when he disappeared without a trace. Police searched for him for several days. They pulled out all the stops, a huge search team, dogs, helicopter searches, the works. But try as they might, they couldn't find him. Though it was completely possible that the forest simply swallowed him up or he got lost or something, police were pretty suspicious. They had good reason to believe that his coworkers knew where he was, because they all had an outlandish story about a seemingly impossible disappearance. It was a story that was so unbelievable that police grew increasingly suspicious of them. They interviewed the men individually, running each of them through standard questioning and basically demanding answers. Still, they clung to this story. But police knew without a shadow of a doubt that they had to be lying, that it was impossible. Investigators fully believed that Travis was killed by his co-workers. At least until he showed up about 30 minutes away, five days later. When police asked him what happened, they received the same impossible story. Now, if your coworker goes missing and you're trying to cover your tracks, you want something believable. You want something simple like, oh, they just wandered off or something, right? I lost track of them. Something normal. But the story the police received was that the men in question saw a strange and mysterious flying object and then fled. When they returned, Travis was gone. A story like this is so unbelievable, I'm not surprised that police immediately turned their attention on the co-workers. But when Travis showed up, their murder theory crumbled. And when he told his own story, he made his co-worker's story sound almost normal. According to Travis Walton, the strange flying ship was there. And while his co-workers turned tail and fled, he decided to get a closer look. He walked out of his truck towards the craft and was struck by a blinding beam of light. The light was so overwhelming and overpowering that he lost consciousness immediately. But that wasn't the end of his story. Alien abduction accounts can vary. Some people see something strange, then black out and return with no memory. Others have vivid memories of the aliens that abducted them, or so they say. And some people just never reappear again. So, by those standards, Travis got off pretty easy. But his story places him in the second type of abduction story. He claimed that he lost consciousness, but he woke up. And as far as he could tell, 
he wasn't in Arizona anymore. He was aboard a spaceship. Now, if you've been listening to the show for some time, you know that aliens are definitely on my list of fears. I will take zombies. I will take ghosts. But the idea of being on a table in a lab... Let's just say I've spent a little too much time in labs and I want no part of being the specimen. It was in this kind of sterile lab environment that Travis claims he woke up. Now, waking up in an alien spacecraft would be terrifying even if you didn't see a single alien. But luck was not on Travis's side there. Around him, three aliens were watching him. They were smaller than he was and entirely hairless from what he could see. But the aliens were not the end of this nightmare. With all of the human rage in his body, Travis attacked his otherworldly abductors. He was prepared to fight for his life, but then they pulled out an unexpected weapon. A human wearing a strange helmet appeared, and this human took him to a new location. In this new location, there were more humans. Travis was no doubt feeling like he was going to make it out at this point. He probably expected peace with the humans, or at least some allies that he could plan an escape with. Instead, they held him down and put some kind of mask over his face. And this was 1975, so casual mask wear really hadn't taken over yet. The second they got the mask on his face, he blacked out again. Five days had passed since Travis disappeared, and he safely assumed that he spent most of it unconscious due to some kind of intergalactic anesthesia. He showed up walking down the road in a state of confusion. Police were able to confirm that he was missing, and that his co-workers didn't kill him and that he was safe now. But they were even more confused than before, until it occurred to them that this all had to be a hoax. The news caught wind of Travis Walton's abduction story, and it went viral. He partnered directly with the National Enquirer, a publication that is well known for their credibility. They interviewed him and even gave him an award for having the best UFO story of the year. They did everything they could to push this story, and it seems that Travis Walton realized just how much potential his story had. After cashing the $5,000 check from the National Enquirer, he tried to prove that his case was completely truthful. He and his coworkers even took polygraph tests and passed. The next breaking news story was that they passed, even though it should have been about how polygraph tests are highly ineffective. But he went on to write a book, had his story turned into a movie, and to this day, he is considered a prominent figure in UFO believer circles. As for everyone else, well, everyone else thinks that he's a con artist or that his group had some kind of group hallucination. And if there is one theory that I would like to go with, it is that it was all made up. If there's any chance that he really was abducted, I don't really want to know. I think I really like this case because it has three different kinds of crime in it. There is one narrative from the police where a man was brutally murdered and buried in a forest by his co-workers. Then there is the aliens making the decision to abduct him. I guess I don't really know if our laws even apply to aliens, but if nothing else, I feel like those human beings who held him down and drugged him should be called in for questioning. Space helmets and all. 
And then, of course, there is the third possible crime. The possibility that Travis Walton and his co-workers staged his entire disappearance and filed a false police report in hope of seeking fame and fortune with a viral, believable alien abduction story. So, you will have to tell me which one you think is true and which crime you think is worse. As for me, I think I'm just going to rest easier making the assumption that it was a hoax carried out for a lot of money. So, if you want to discuss alien movies, abduction stories, or your preferred apocalypse of choice, feel free to contact me on Twitter or Instagram using the tag at datpod. Thanks, guys. <laughs>